Now we're having a look at the theorem of Pythagoras. And you must excuse my voice, I'm a little bit ill. Um, but that's not going to stop me from teaching you one of the most coolest theorems ever known to mathematicians and also today to you. Okay? Now the theorem of Pythagoras is a way to calculate the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, that's a very skew high well, well, not straight hypotenuse, but the length of the hypotenuse given the length of the two right angle sides. Okay, so if I'm going to, let's say that's my observed angle, if this is the opposite, okay, because it's opposite my observed angle, and this is my adjacent, okay, the theorem of hypotenuse says, oh, <laughs> the theorem of Pythagoras says, if I know the opposite and I know the adjacent, what is the length of the hypotenuse? Now before we get to the exact way on how to calculate it, let's just first have an, a look at a, a very basic understanding of the slanted side. So imagine we have a track, okay, so here's a square track. And someone is going to take the diagonal distance, okay, so they're going to walk along here. And another person is going to take the uh, right angle side so they're going to walk along here and up there which person if they leave at the same time they walk at the same pace which person will reach the other side first okay I have no doubt that you know well obviously this guy he's taking a shortcut okay he's taking a shortcut so he will be there first now what that means is that if this is the hypotenuse the opposite and the adjacent one thing we do know is that the hypotenuse is smaller than the opposite plus the adjacent. So for example, if this was 3 um, and that was 4 meters or whatever we are using, okay, then this hypotenuse will be less than 7. Okay, the next thing um, I'm going to ask you is if this guy takes the diagonal and this guy only walks straight he only it's only about reaching the other side one guy goes diagonally another guy goes straight forward which will re um, which will reach the other side first okay well obviously this dude is going to reach the other side first because the diagonal is also longer than this straight side so in other words another um, thing that we see is that the hypotenuse is also bigger than the opposite length or the adjacent length so so in this case the hypotenuse is larger than 4 and the hypotenuse is also larger than 3 so the hypotenuse this slanted side the distance is that this dude is walking is somewhere between 4 and 7 and to be exactly right the answer ex is exactly 5 now how on earth do we get to 5 units and this is the remarkable finding by um, mathematicians that's been using it for centuries and centuries and that is that if I were to take any right angled triangle and if this distance whatever it is okay we're going to call it the opposite distance if I were to take this distance and square it what that means is that I'm making a square out of this side that means I'm I'm making a square out of it okay and if I take this adjacent distance that distance adjacent distance and I square it as well okay so actually I should not put the square there this is the opposite square and the adjacent this is the adjacent square so I make a square out of the adjacent side okay so this is the adjacent square and now we have this remarkable thing that if I were to actually merge these two squares together and with what we have after we've added them together we make a new square that new square will fit perfectly 
on the slanted side on the hypotenuse okay so <laughs> obviously I've got very ugly looking squares there but I'm sure you get my point okay so this square that we have here would be the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared okay so what would a side length be what would the length of the side be well all of the sides will have the same length so I'm just going to look at this one to find the side length of a square I take the area of the square and take the square root of it okay so that would be the square root o squared plus a squared okay so is this a bit weird okay so let me let me explain it one other way okay if I were to take this square that's on the right side and I were to use paint to color in that square and I would color in the square on this side okay so I would use paint to color in that square then the amount of paint it takes to color both of these two squares would be the exact same amount of paint it will take to color this square okay so paint is a very good way of understanding area and and that's what we are saying okay so what you notice here is that the hypotenuse the length of the hypotenuse okay which is the length here because it's a square it's the length there the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared or another way the more common formula would be the hypotenuse square that's the hypotenuse square is equal to the opposite square that's this square plus the adjacent square okay now very often and most of the times you are actually going to find that they call it a b and c okay so most of the people actually takes this triangle and call it side length a b and c and then all you should notice is that the slanted side the hypotenuse is c so c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared and that's it so if you now give me since we have three parameters parameters c a and b if you give me any two i can go and calculate the other one just using just substituting in there and solving it let me do one example okay so let's say we have a triangle okay a very common triangle this one okay where we have that side is three and that side is four and we're asking what is that length okay and that's where we get to that first um, triangle that I drew where I said that this was five let's see why is it five well because this is a that is B or opposite and adjacent however you want to call it and that's C so we know that C squared is equal to a squared plus B squared okay so a squared is 3 squared that means it's 9 plus b squared is 4 squared so that is 16 so in total we get a beautiful 25 so the area of the square here okay there you go the area of the square here would be 25 units so the side length would be the square root of that which is just 5 so c on its own the length of c would just be 5 Let's look at another one. Okay, let's take this one. Okay, and this time we notice that it's one of the legs or one of the right angles that's been left out. Let's call it B that was left out. Okay, so we have C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. We know that c squared is 13 squared, that's 169, is equal to a squared, which is 12 squared, which is equal to 144, plus b squared, okay? And if we solve for b, we find that b squared is equal to 25, so b is equal to 5. That's it.